I don't think it is very useful to speculate on what God might, or might not, be able to do. Rather, we should examine what he actually does with the universe we live in. After a successful launch and orbit insertion of the James Webb Space Telescope, NASA has already started looking for a successor, as they now want to send a telescope beyond the orbit of Saturn. And there are some compelling reasons behind this ambitious project. The JWST is the most advanced space telescope built to date, and it has been sent 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth to orbit the L2 point, which further orbits the Sun. L2, or the second Lagrange point, is an excellent place to achieve the goals set for this telescope. It is ideal for astronomy because the spacecraft is close enough to communicate with Earth and keep the Sun, Earth, and Moon behind it for solar power. It provides an uninterrupted view of the cosmos. So although it's the farthest telescope scientists have deployed in space, it's still too close to the Sun to make observations of deep space objects. This is because the bright light from the Sun interferes with the near-Earth telescopes, making some targets outright impossible to observe, and this is where a telescope lying far away in the outer solar system can come to the rescue. So could the Louvoir telescope be the answer? NASA is faced with a difficult decision about which instrument will shape scientists' research in the 2040s as the agency's next major space telescope. Although the answer is still years away, NASA has financed extensive evaluations of four potential projects to better understand the risks and opportunities associated with each proposal. One of such mission concepts is called the Large UV Optical IR Surveyor, a concept for a highly capable multi-wavelength space observatory with ambitious scientific objectives. The team behind Louvoir has proposed a launch date in the mid-2030s. The space telescope includes upgradable modern instruments and would reside at Earth-Sun's second Lagrange point, or L2 point. The state-of-the-art observatory would be able to observe ultraviolet, visible, and near-infrared wavelengths of light. The Louvoir study team is considering two designs. One with a 15-meter mirror, known as Architecture A, that would use the space launch system, and another design, Architecture B, with a mirror 8 meters across, which could launch on a heavy lift vehicle like the Falcon Heavy. The 15-meter mirror would be 50% bigger than the biggest Earth-based telescope. This mission would enable significant advances in the wide range of science, from the age of reionization to galaxy formation and evolution, star and planet formation, and solar system remote sensing. The main purpose of Louvoir is to characterize a wide spectrum of exoplanets, including those that could be habitable or possibly inhabitable. If Louvoir is built, its primary contribution to the field will be to provide a detailed image of planets that now meet scientists' bare-bones criteria for Earth-like planets. These planets resemble our planet in terms of size, mass, and orbit. To us, extrasolar planets are little black shadows, not pale blue spots. A mission like Louvoir would change that by collecting enough data for scientists to begin studying so-called Earth-like exoplanets in a statistical population-wide manner. That's similar to what the Kepler Space Telescope did for exoplanets in general. It discovered so many new worlds that astronomers were able to begin to understand the relative quantity of massive planets orbiting very close to their stars versus small rocky worlds. Louvoir would zoom in on such small rocky worlds and tell scientists what percentage of planets that appear to be Earth-like have surface water an atmosphere and growing organisms. It would be able to detect the structure and compositions of exoplanet atmospheres and surfaces. It could also identify biosignatures produced by life in the atmosphere of a faraway exoplanet. Biosignatures of interest in the atmosphere include carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, molecular oxygen, ozone, and water. Louvoir would not produce images but spectra breakdowns of the amount of light at various wavelengths originating from each of the worlds it investigates. These spectra would allow scientists to identify the compounds on that world, offering further information about what's happening on the surface. According to the Louvoir team, if scientists can do these investigations on at least 28 small rocky worlds that turn out to have atmospheres but show no signs of life, they should be able to conclude that less than 10% of planets with the same size and orbital characteristics as Earth contain life. If such an analysis succeeds in identifying life, scientists can move on to a more difficult problem like understanding the laws of life. There are undoubtedly more, but we'll never know what they are till we have more examples of independent evolution. Now you may be wondering how we can send such a space telescope that far in the solar system. Sending the James Webb Space Telescope 1.5 million kilometers was a nail-biting task that involved hundreds of single-point failure items. So how do we accomplish sending a telescope more than 10 times this distance? Well, 
The solution to this problem lies in the distance itself. Even a tiny telescope lying between 10 to 100 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun can outperform mighty telescopes near our planet. Of course, we know that the strength of a telescope depends on its primary mirror. The bigger the primary mirror, the more powerful the space telescope. But the scientific strength of a telescope far from Earth would come mainly from its location and not its size. So even if we put a small telescope around or beyond the orbit of Saturn, it solves our purpose. If the Earth receives 100 units of sunlight, Saturn, which lies 9.5 times the distance between the Sun and Earth, receives just 1.1 units of sunlight compared to Earth. Hence, it's really dark out there. Though small and simple as compared to telescopes like Hubble or Webb, a telescope at this distance can take some truly unique observations that are difficult to achieve from a vantage point near the Earth. In addition, such a telescope can have a mass of just 9 kilograms, enabling it to be carried on any mission to Saturn or beyond, and we have accomplished something like this before. For example, in the Cassini-Huygens missions, the Huygens probe that had a mass of 318 kilograms was sent along with the Cassini probe. Upon reaching Saturn's orbit, the Huygens probe separated from Cassini to land on Titan, Saturn's largest moon. A view of the solar system from an outside vantage point can provide a lot of information about the dust cloud surrounding the Sun. This can also help understand the makeup of dust in other star systems. The disk of dust in the plane of the planets reflects the Sun's light on Earth, creating a haze almost 100 to 1,000 times brighter than light from other galaxies which in turn obscures views of the cosmos obtained with near-Earth telescopes. But a telescope outside this dust cloud stays in a much darker region, enabling it to measure the light coming from outside the solar system without any interference. And if we can have a correct measurement of the ambient light of the universe over a wide range of wavelengths, we can have insights into how matter condensed into the first stars and galaxies. Besides that, this telescope can also help test the existing models of the universe. In addition, it can employ the gravitational lensing effects of the Sun to make exciting discoveries. Gravitational lensing occurs when the gravitational field of a massive object distorts the light of objects present behind it, creating a magnified and distorted view of the background objects that are otherwise difficult to see. Gravitational lensing plays a crucial role in looking for rogue planets. These are free-floating planets that have been ejected from their planetary systems, or maybe they were never a part of one. Astronomers believe that about 50 billion starless planets are wandering in our galaxy, and some of them might have conditions to support life despite the absence of a star to orbit. That's why the major goal of Louvoir would be to detect and study alien planets to understand the universality of life better. Still, the telescope would also find lots of other worlds. However, investigating exoplanets alone will not be enough to make Louvoir a flagship mission concept. The Louvoir team must also make the telescope's architecture relevant to a variety of astrophysics subfields. As a result, the team had to refine the suggested instrument suite to be as flexible as possible. The mission concept team also designed a dozen sample science projects spanning the scale of the universe to be included in the mission concept spanning the scale of the universe. The team wanted to show off the work the telescope could do, from studying dark matter to showing how galaxies work to monitoring icy moons in the outer solar system for plumes of water gushing out through their frozen shells. Louvoir would be able to observe objects within the solar system better than anything else. For example, here's a view of Enceladus from Hubble compared to the view from Louvoir. If NASA chooses Louvoir as its next massive space telescope project, it will culminate a long line of ideas. Its predecessor, the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, previously known as the Wide Field Infrared Survey Telescope, was repeatedly cancelled on budget requests by President Donald Trump's administration only to be revived by Congress. Not all the strategies are under the team's control. Others would require a review of NASA's policy. If NASA chooses the project, the Louvoir team believes the recommendations will help them avoid a similar fate as Webb. So who do you think will be the rightful successor of the James Webb Telescope? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel with all notifications enabled to never miss any exciting updates.